Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And I'm sure spring is definitely here for some of you folks already. And in fact, we've been having some really good weather ourselves the last few days around here. So it's the perfect time to take a look at some of the best hiking knives you can get your hands on right now, both fixed blades and folders. Let's check them out. All right, so a few caveats right up front here. Um, I'm not going to show you things that are the absolute lightest possible way to get a bladed edge out there uh, as part of your kit when you're going hiking. Um, you can certainly find some things that are lighter than what I'm going to show you today, even within the, own, uh, the brand's own families of these knives. But I want to give you some suggestions of some things that are big enough to make a difference. And, and that's kind of an amorphous term, I know. Um, but I want you to have something you can go to get a decent hold on because the last thing you want if you know your fingers are numb or you're fighting adrenaline is a small knife that you doesn't have a great grip that you can't hold on to very well. Surefire recipe to either lose the knife or cut yourself and we don't want that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the theme of what I'm giving you here. Some stuff that's really light, but it's still big enough to make a difference. So I'm actually going to start with a multi-tool, a Swiss Army knife. This is the Camper model, which comes in about two and a half ounces and costs about 27 bucks right now. It's easy to see why a lot of folks love to take a Swiss Army knife, either hiking or camping, because you get a lot of functionality in a very small space. Obviously, there are lighter weight things, like I said, like the, uh, the keychain sized classic, but something like this is going to be a lot more useful uh, and cover a lot more ground in case of uh, an emergency situation. Now the camper, of course, has that nice main blade, just classic pen knife blade. You've also got a smaller pen knife blade, so you've got two edges on you, which is great because this is not a steel that's going to hold an edge forever, so it's nice to have an extra one. You've also got bottle opener, can opener, as well as Victorinox's excellent wood saw. One of the best, if not the best, in the small multi-tool, like pocket-sized multi-tool category. They're just really good. You've also got your toothpick and tweezers. Tweezers, of course, are going to come in handy for splinters, maybe ticks, even though it's not a, a super heavy-duty pair. can get, get you by in a pinch. And uh, especially with a blade like these, it's going to work well for some kind of food prep if you're cutting a little cheese or summer sausage. Got that nice toothpick there to aid you out. And then on the back, you've got a corkscrew and You've got that nice all there, gives you another crisp edge and a few more capabilities there. Now, if you're familiar with Victorinox's lineup, you might be asking at this point, why choose the camper if they've got a model specifically called the Hiker? And I'll tell you, the big difference between, or the only real difference between the Hiker and the camper is the Hiker has a Phillips screwdriver instead of the corkscrew. And I prefer the corkscrew very much, in fact, for an outdoors oriented knife because you're probably not going to need to drive any screws when you're heading outdoors. I mean, there can be exceptions. If you're carrying a certain piece of gear that has it, you might appreciate the hiker more. But the corkscrew is great, but not for the reason you think. Of course, you can open a bottle of wine, and if you're kind of the kind of person who likes to uh, trek out, find a beautiful vista, lay out some, uh, some wine and crackers and food and that sort of thing, it's going to certainly work for you. But I love these corkscrews for as an aid to help you untying knots, especially stuff like paracord that can get cinched down really tight. Because there's no sharp edges, you've got a blunt tip on this. It's great for working in between those threads, teasing it loose a little bit, and it's just a great, great bit of added functionality on this knife. All right, next up, we're going to go to another longtime favorite of the ultralight hiking crowd the Openel knives, and I'm gonna suggest the number eight. Again, it's kind of just the right size, and the weight is even not too bad on these, just 1.4 ounces for a full-on medium-sized blade here. It's not a, a mini blade whatsoever. Now, the standard model comes with just a plain beech wood handle for about 17 bucks. This painted version is part of the Colorama series, comes in a couple bucks more. Um, and actually, now that I think of it, the, uh, the paint might add a little bit, maybe a fraction of an ounce, so if you're hyper concerned about that, you can maybe save a little bit there. Um, not enough to worry about, I don't think. But these things are great, man. Uh, the blades on these are about three and a quarter inch long. You can get them in a Sandvik stainless, tw a 12C27 mod, or a, uh, a classic carbon steel, whichever you happen to prefer. You've got a safety lock in terms of the ring on the collar right there. But the shining star of this model, it's the handles for sure. 
It's just a single piece. You don't have any kind of back spring or anything on the back. It's just simple, smooth, no hot spots, melts right into the hand. This is gonna be a great knife for doing a little bit of whittling. Maybe you need a stick to, to roast some marshmallows, a little bit of food prep. You've got a nice full flat grind with some thin steel there. It's gonna be a great little slicer. And then you fold it up, twist the ring back around so it's locked again, throw it in your pack or pocket, and you'll virtually never know it's there. Then when you need it, pull it out. It's a two-hand opener, as you can obviously see, and lock it open, and you're ready to go. Now, if you'd rather have something that was a one-hand opener, you might want to check out the K-Bar Dozier series of folding hunters. Uh, and there is a smaller version, but I'm going to show you the three-inch version here. Weighs a little bit more, but you get a little more handle to grab onto and a bit more blade to work with as well. Uh, this particular one with these, uh, these nice green and black colors is about 22 bucks, and it comes in uh, just over two ounces. But you've got that three inch blade there. It's a uh, OS 8 stainless. Uh, there is a D2 version out recently if you want that uh, for some more edge retention. And you can get this of course in uh, a more neutral look with like black handles and a satin finished blade as well. But it's nice weather outside. I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the colors. So I'm gonna show you some cool looking colors today. The handle on these are really nice as well. They're not as like rounded and comfortable as that open L, but the shape of it is designed in such a way that it's pretty much gonna work for any hand size out there. If you happen to have a larger hand and it feels like you might be coming off the end of the handle because of the shape here, it kind of lets you curl up and grab onto the back. It's just not gonna stick out. It's not gonna jut or jab or do anything like that. As far as security, you've got that mid-mounted lock back there, nice and secure, and in contrast to some stuff like a classic buck knife, which we'll look at in a second, it's a little bit easier to close one-handed since the lock isn't situated out here near the back. Speaking of the back, you can see the pocket clip there. You can, of course, take it off if you want to save a, a little bit of weight, but I say leave it on. Um, you can reverse that around to the other side. You've also got a removable, or I should say reversible, thumb stud. That way this knife can be set up in either left or right hand opening configuration, or if you're really counting those ounces, you could certainly take it out as well. But back to that blade, it's just a simple spear point shape. It's a very versatile shape. You got a hollow grind on there. Gonna work well at pretty much anything you throw at it in a hiking scenario. So speaking of that buck knife, here we go. Coming in at about 2.9 ounces, we've got the Buck 110 Slim Select Folding Hunter. And these guys come in about 27 bucks right now. Uh, and the reason I'm showing you this as opposed to the Ranger version, which is certainly smaller and weighs a little bit less, is for under three ounces, this is one of the good larger options. If you want a little bit more blade than some of these can offer, this is where uh, I might take a look if I were you. Because uh, you got about three and three quarters of an inch on the blade steel there, 420 HC, very nicely heat treated by Buck as they always do, and a, uh, a slightly nicer shape than the uh, classic folding hunter for general use in that the scoop on the clip point here is more straight, but you got a hollow grind as well, just a nice cutter overall. We've also got dual thumb studs, so this is an easy one hand opener unlike the classic 110. But just like that classic 110, we've got another handle shape that is gonna work with a wide variety of hand sizes, just like that Dozier too. It's not quite as neutral due to the shape here, but you've got a lot of length and you do have the ability to kind of hang off the back if you need to with that pinky finger. But even if I'm wearing gloves, I've got slightly larger than average hands. And like I said, even if I'm wearing a pair of gloves, I'm gonna be able to, be able to get a pretty good grip on that knife. This is the orange glass filled nylon version, but Again, there are uh, plainer versions as well as some other bright colors like reds and blues. Dig in the colors they offer on these for sure. And of course, yellow is just, a, or sorry, orange is just a classic outdoorsy color as well. You got your deep carry pocket clip on this guy, which is removable and reversible. You've even got extra screws there. So, you know, take those out to save a little bit of weight if you want, but it's gonna sit there nice and easy. It's not gonna take up a ton of room in your pocket either thanks to the way it folds up and the fact that it is so slim. I've got one more lockback knife to show you now, and that's the Spyderco Native 5. This is the salt version because it has a nice yellow handle. Uh, these come in about 2.3 ounces, and this particular version comes in about 130 bucks right now, uh, but the standard version starts a little bit over 100. But that's one of the nice things about the Native 5 series and Spyderco in general is they offer a ton of different choices. You can get 
this with the, uh, the lightweight version like this or in a G10 is a little bit more weight. That's why we're showing the lightweight here. Um, but you can get it with some classic steels or some exotic stuff like the LC 200 N that you see on this particular blade, which is virtually rust proof, which is just kind of nice. Now on the theme of choices, you can get this in a plain edge, which I, I usually tend to prefer for an outdoors knife, but serrations do have their place and you can get this in a serrated edge, just like this one. You've also got a nice full handle with this knife. And that's thanks to the way Spyderco integrates this finger choil here around the pivot. I can get all four of my fingers on this very easily, have a nice full grip and maintain solid and safe control over the blade. And that's where this comes ahead of something I see recommended a lot as a hiking knife is the Spyderco Dragonfly. It's a little too small for my tastes or and a little too small for me to want to recommend to you which is why I'm showing you this guy, even though it weighs a little bit more. And one of the cool things, and the reason you've seen three lockbacks in a row is the construction when combined with lightweight handle material like this really lends itself to lightweight construction because they don't need to have any full liners on the inside of these handles like you might need on a liner locking knife. So even though you have a big broad slab of metal there as the, the back spring or the lock as a net, it tends to come in a little bit lower. But if you do want a different locking mechanism, we got to talk about the Benchmade bug out. And yes, I'm showing the original full size and not the new minis. Again, for the same reason that I, uh, I recommend the native over the Dragonfly on the Spyderco. But the bug out was kind of famously marketed right at the beginning as being the perfect folding knife for a backpacker. Uh, because you have a decently sized blade here. It's uh, about three and a quarter inches but the whole knife comes in at 1.8 ounces. So very light, just barely heavier than that classic Openel. Bit more expensive. Uh, this is a US made knife, just like that Spyderco was. And as such, this guy comes in about 132 right now. But like that Dozier we looked at earlier, we've got a nice versatile blade shape, just a classic drop point with thin steel and an almost full flat grind. It means it's gonna slice really, really nicely. Now the handles are a grivery material, which is another, uh, another type of glass filled nylon, essentially simplifying things a little bit, but one of the nice things about the original and about this blue color in particular is blue is one of the least naturally or the least common naturally occurring colors in nature. So in a way, and in a lot of situations, depending on the season, blue can actually be better for visibility than orange typically is. Um, your mileage can always vary of course, but, it's a neat choice for a knife like this. Inside the handles there also, you've got that different locking mechanism I was talking about, Benchmade's Axis Lock, which is kind of the, uh, the original crossbar lock, and they're really nice. Completely ambidextrous, also thanks to that reversible pocket clip. So lefties or righties, this is gonna be a complete mirror image and is gonna work exactly the same. And then even if you're using your offhand, it's still gonna be very intuitive and easy to use. Now, I think I'm even on record on video of saying this, but I think even more so than the hiking aspect where this knife certainly is a good option, I think it's even better as an EDC option. Because again, you've got a classic versatile shape. It's kind of unassuming, but you've got a lot to work with. And again, in those more urban situations, that blue coloration could also come in handy by making the knife seem a little friendlier, which that's never a bad thing. All right, now we're gonna move on to fixed blades and again, just kind of keeping this point front and center. I'm not going to go for the, uh, the absolute lightest edge you can get your hands on, but we're combining that lightweight nature with something that's big enough or strong enough to make a difference. And when we're talking of lightweight fixed blades, the conversation always has to start with Mora or Muraknif if we're, if we're following our pronunciation more particularly. And while the companion model is often kind of the go-to recommendation for a lot of folks, I actually like to recommend the basic series. Uh, this is actually uh, one of the uh, 2020 limited edition colorways, but they've also got a lot of colors on this particular model. This guy comes in about 14 bucks and is very lightweight. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind with a, a belt knife like this or with a fixed blade is you do have to factor in the weight of the sheath. So that does kind of limit things a little bit, but this is the sheath we've got. It's nice, hard plastic design, 
very versatile, nothing fancy, but all of this comes in about 3.8 ounces. Not too bad at all. For that amount of weight, you're getting a blade that's about uh, three and five eighths of an inch long. Nice shape. You got a couple different steels to choose from. Again, a stainless and a carbon, kind of like that open L. And enough handle here to get a full grip on, even for my hand size. And one of the things I always like, you've got a full finger guard on this knife as well, which is appreciated for a lot of different situations. But if your hiking situation turns into a survival situation, it's going to come in even more appreciated in those cases because last thing you need in a survival situation is a unnecessary injury. Now the blades on these, of course, do come with a Scandi grind, really good at carving wood, but the basic series, they give you steel that's thin enough so that you can still pull off kind of more general slicing a little bit better than some of the heavy duty mores out there. I tend to prefer the slicing characteristics you get from these thinner blades while still being able to do those really easy feather sticks, whittling, trap carving, all of that sort of thing that you might want to do to pass a little bit of time if you're taking a rest while you're hiking. Now, if the Scandi grind isn't your thing and you want something a little more conventional, uh, one of the uh, a frequent Mora alternative I like to recommend is the Cold Steel Pendleton Light Hunter. Uh, this comes in about 17 bucks and with the sheath, which is very similar in fashion to that Mora, comes in at 3.9 ounces. And so just 0.1 of an ounce heavier than that Mora Basic. But you've got a more kind of conventional grind, or at least conventional as we think of it here in the States with this hollow grind going on. Blade length is about the same as that basic, about three and five eighths, but we've got a nice horizontal grain going on here, which is nice to see on such an affordable knife. And we've also got maybe a slightly more versatile shape with the drop point here. You've got some good slicing characteristics going on, obviously with a name like Light Hunter in the name, make a very good hunting knife as well. Again, like that Mora, we've got kind of a plasticized type of overmolded handle over the tang of the knife. Feels nice and comfortable in the hand. One of the things that uh, you don't have to deal with is any seams from the tang of the knife. You may give up a little bit in strength versus something like a full tang, but that's just a trade-off that uh, may or may not be worth it to you. Also, like that Mora, I feel like I'm making a lot of comparisons between these two, but that's actually a pretty good versus matchup there. But like that knife, we also have a bit of a finger guard, not quite as aggressive, but certainly very usable. You even got a little bit of space ahead of that if you wanted to choke up with your index finger for some finer control. My fingers might be a little bit large for that, so your mileage may vary. Uh, one of the ways that this is a little bit different than that Mora though, is we don't have a carbon steel option. This is just a uh, 4116 stainless. At this kind of price, it's a pretty darn good material selection. Now, next up, I've got a couple of knives from the, uh, the bird and trout style, uh, which I think makes a, a very good small hiking utility blade. And I'm going to start with the CRKT Mossback Bird and Trout. Nice little package comes in about 2.8 ounces with the sheath and just 20 bucks for these guys. The sheath in this case is a simple nylon affair, not quite the uh, positive retention as the, uh, the previous two knives, but it has its own kind of charms in the way it works. Got a simple belt loop there on the back as opposed to the, uh, the clip on style of sheath that those other two knives had, which that could be, uh, could be a more appreciated thing if you want a little bit more security. It's a trade off though, because again, you don't have that snap in quality, but the blade itself, I really like. Uh, we're about uh, just under three inches in length. Simple narrow drop point. It's going to be a very versatile little shape. You've got a lot of agility for going around corners and making finer detail cuts. And the steel here is a carbon steel, actually, SK5 carbon steel. So it's nice and tough as well. As such, you will need to take care of these a little bit more. Um, as you can see here, there's a little bit of surface rust on the, uh, the edge itself of these, but that's going to sharpen right off, no problem. But that black coating in this case is going to help protect the areas that aren't edge. Now, the handles on these guys are actual G10. So you've got a pretty, uh, a much more premium feeling material than some of the the fixed blades we've looked at so far. And they give it a nice matte, kind of matte sanded finish to give it a little bit more texture and help you maintain your grip on it. It's fairly thin, keeps the weight down a little bit and helps with really fine control. But again, you may be, you may be sensing a, a theme with some of my picks here. The handle has a neutral enough shape to work. 
with a lot of different sizes and you've got that nice finger guard there for a little bit of extra protection. All right, for the next bird and trout knife, we're going more old school with the old hickory bird and trout. Uh, comes in uh, about 23 bucks and the weight on this with sheath is just 1.9 ounces. Now the construction here is a bit simpler. Uh, American made actually, which is an uh, impressive thing at this price point. Uh, I wouldn't say it's quite as durable necessarily as that Columbia River knife because the handles here, we have a partial tang and we've got thinner steel, carbon steel at least, so you've got toughness there, but it's a little bit of a, a slightly daintier design, not to say it's not useful. Those handles are just classic wood with the riveted construction, partial tang like I said, and the blade shape is really nice. We've got almost all belly, so you've got a nice sweeping cutting profile, thin steel with that full flat grind. It's gonna be a really nice slicer really nice food prep knife and in the hand feels like almost nothing's there. Uh, the sheath actually adds a little bit more weight to it, but the trade-off is get a nice classic looking leather sheath in this case. Doesn't look cheap at all. You've got some nice vibes there when it's hanging off your belt. There's something to be said for that for sure. All right, the last style we're gonna look at um, is the neck knife or the outdoors oriented neck knife. And one of the ways that you can be sure that your small knife has is large enough or strong enough to make a difference is if you make it stout, skeletonized out of just some classic carbon steel. And there's pretty much always two knives that come to mind, a little bit different, but similar. You've got the Essie Azula and the Becker BK11. But we'll start with the Azulas. Prices on these guys start around 60 bucks. Uh, with the hard plastic sheath here comes in about 2.6 ounces. Uh, and that's just using kind of the outer casing of the sheath. We'll call it the outer casing anyway. Uh, these do come with uh, some attachment hardware and a clip, which means you could carry this on the belt or in your pocket, or to save a little bit of weight and to have a little extra material on you, you could use some paracord through here and just carry it neck fashion. But the construction on these guys are rock solid. You've got 1095 carbon steel and they're made by Rowan Manufacturing who kind of have the lock on a really, really strong heat treat for 1095. They get a lot of performance out of it and the design works really well too. As far as blade length, you've got about two and a half inches of sharpened edge, full flat grind, classic drop point, not too thick or too thin, but with that carbon steel construction, you've got a lot of strength to these. I've actually personally taken one of these little guys and done a lot of batoning with it, splitting sticks down into smaller sticks and you know, getting your kindling going. This is not gonna be your first choice for that type of chore by a long shot, but I just wanted to see how it would hold up and they do hold up very well. You've got a lot of belly going on, but because of the way the blade kind of angles down a little bit, it brings the tip a little further down along the center line. It means you can drill with that a little bit better and if you wanna carry this for EDC as well, that belly's not gonna get in the way as much on some more detailed cuts. But this is gonna work well at hunting as well as your, uh, your general hiking needs. You've got that coating on here, just like that uh, CRKT, in that it's gonna help protect the steel. But I suppose you could remove, uh, remove the coating to remove a little bit of weight, um, I say slightly sarcastically. Um, as far as the handle comfort goes, uh, there are a few options. If you don't like the skeletonized nature, there are some handle scales you can buy and, and pop onto these for a little more girth, or kind of the same, uh, same way we were talking about the neck carry. A lot of folks really like to wrap these in paracord so you get a little bit more girth and a little bit more comfort on those handles without adding too much extra bulk or weight. And lastly, we come again to the BK11, um, which is definitely the heaviest package we've looked at so far. With the sheath, we're coming in about four and a half ounces. But for that, you're getting something that's definitely time proven and virtually bulletproof. I mean, this is a, a very, very sturdy little neck knife that's definitely gonna see you through to the other side. Price on these is about 50 bucks, made in America, just like that Essie, from a very similar steel. This is 1095 CV, which the, uh, the addition of the chromium and the vanadium makes more of a difference in the manufacturing side of things. When it comes to actual end user experience, it's probably gonna be pretty much the same as that Essie. We've got a little more blade length on this guy, about three and a half inches, full flat grind, a little bit thicker with a, a black powder coating in this case. 
definitely something that uh, that you could do a little bit of a uh, little bit of unwise knife use with if you needed to in an emergency situation. Likewise, when it comes to the handles, you do have an option for upgraded scales made out of micarta in this case, as well as uh, you have the ability to do those paracord wraps too. And then on the back, you've got the uh, the wire breaker slash bottle opener here on the end. It's always nice to have that uh, that on a thing. So technically, it makes it a multi tool. But anyway, if you're going to use this uh, to uh, use that uh, piece of tool there on the end, just make sure you have the sheath on. Don't don't grab it by the sharpened edge. As far as the handles on them, they're a little bit less neutral than that SE, which I didn't even mention. Nice neutral handles work with a lot of different uh, different hand sizes. Um, but if you like this blade shape, but you like that SE handle, check out the BK14, which actually marries those two together. They're, it's a collaboration between K-Bar and SE. K-Bar builds them with the BK11 blade and the handle from that SE Azula. Really nice. So even though this knife is a little bit heavier than most of the stuff we looked at so far, um, one of the other reasons I wanted to make sure I talked about this one is because of the sheath itself. A little bit bulkier too, as you can see, carry it neck fashion. Uh, but this kind of rectangular shape actually makes a great platform for kind of a, a mini survival rig or a mi mini hiking rig, if you will. If you, you know, put some ranger bands around this, more commonly known as uh, bicycle inner tubes, you, you'll be able to stash some things up inside here, like a compass, some fire starting materials, signal mirrors, little things like that, little survival goodies. And if you're just going for, you know, a quick uh, couple hour hike maybe, Take your, uh, your canteen, take your water bottle with you and throw this rig around your neck with the knife and those survival tools there. You got a lot going on without a whole lot of uh, extra gear investment. You can just grab and go. All right, that's all I've got to show you today. Make sure to let me know what you thought of my picks as always. And if you've got your own favorite hiking knife, make sure to let me know down there in the comments as well. Now, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're going to spend your hard-earned money on one of these knives, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.